call to order the Tuesday, July the 12th meeting of the Griffin City Commission. At this time, I'd like to call the Reverend Tracy Stone to come forward to bring our, our invocation. Tracy's new to our community. He is the pastor of Centerpoint Church. Uh, a church that's been heavily involved in alleviating some of the woes of our community and especially the, the Spalding County tornado. His church has ministered to and provided housing, lodging, not housing, but lodging, and are about to complete build, rebuilding a house for one of the victims of the tornado. So, Tracy, if you would come forward, it is our honor to have you with us tonight. And would everyone please stand? Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I wanted to share, I was flying the other day, and I saw in a magazine a promotional for a motivational picture. It had a red sports car going at a high rate of speed um, down a mountain cliff. And the caption, at the, and it had a hairpin turn just over the next cliff that the driver couldn't see. And the caption at the bottom of the picture read, A bend in the road is not the end of the road unless you fail to make the turn. A bend in the road is not the end of the road unless you fail to make the turn. Proverbs 16 and 9 says, A man plans in his heart his ways, but the Lord orders his steps. It is my prayer and is my desire that as a city, as a spiritual father and leader in this church, that we make the bends and the turns, knowing that we plan, but the Lord orders our steps. May we pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight in our Savior, your Son's name, Jesus Christ. We ask that you would show favor among us tonight, that you would give us the wisdom of Solomon, that you would touch each and every person that's in this room tonight, and even those that are not here, touch our city, Father. We ask you to minister to each council member. We ask you to touch our mayor, touch all of the participants tonight. May they be fair and just and honest. Father, may we treat others as you, we would want to be treated. And Father, may your blessings be on this meeting. Give us travel mercies as we go home, as we do what you've called us to do. We speak the blessings in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you. Reverend Stone has to go to another meeting at his church tonight that has to do with the tornado victims, so we are excusing him, and we thank him for coming to bring our invocation. Okay, at this time, we will review, review the financials for the month ending May the 31st, 2011. Director of Administrative Services, Marcus Schwab, will address. Good evening, Marcus. Good evening, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, first item on the list will be the cash balance report. And this is just merely a <coughs> quick uh, presentation on, as of the balances as of May 31st. I have a question on that. Yes, sir. On the OPEP fund, the cash, uh, there's a great deal of cash in that. Is that because the money hasn't been transferred yet to cover the OPEP requirement for the year? Is that why it's accumulated in there? That's correct. There is a final transfer that gets taken care of at the end of the year. Okay. Yes. So you're accruing for that? Yes, sir. Thank I you. hope you've already done it. Yes. <laughs> okay. If it's the fiscal year you're worried about. Yes. Okay. Anything else? Anything you want to point out to us, Marcus, um, that we should pay attention to? Not really. There's one transaction in the payroll account that uh, puts the position a little bit upside down. That's a timing difference between the end of the month and the first of the month when we actually shuffle cash around. So it's nothing there to be concerned about. There's, in the cash report, really, there's nothing to speak of. Okay. Are there any questions from the commissioners? Well, are you going to shift over to the other statements? Yes, sir. Okay. okay, go ahead. Unless you have some questions. No, no, I'm done with that one. Okay. I'm ready for the next. We'll move into the uh, local option sales tax with the single sheet and the SPLOS. Looks like we're tracking at around $3.2 million. We're going to hit the target on the, on the uh, local option sales tax, just shy above $3.3 million. And on the special purpose local option sales tax, it looks like we're going to achieve our numbers there as well. 
the budget was 1.6 million. We've already collected 1.8, so we're going to be well within the limits there. Moving on to the interim statements by fund. This is all funds, and we have roughly 8% left for the year, one month for June, and we're at 97%. So if we look at 92% versus 97% on the revenues, we're pretty much where we need to be. On the flip side of that, in yes, both sir. the uh, all funds and the general funds, <coughs> we're about 86% on the expenses. So that means we're doing very, very well, or there's money to be spent, or will be spent for the end of the year, <coughs> or some of both. There will be an accrual that's done at the end of the year for payroll dollars and for anything else that comes in through the month of June. There's typically about a two-week delay, and that will make make up the difference, and we'll be very close to the numbers. But I believe we'll be under budget, but we will be close to the number. Any other questions? Ryan? Just no questions? I'm curious if you already took a peek at, at June for the most part and have a general concept, but <coughs> I assume by that statement that you think we're going to come in. I already have the numbers issued for, for the, the temporary or the preliminary numbers have gone out already today. I know so. it would be hard to not go and, and look at <laughs> all the years ending up. Well, having through. already looked at the numbers, you can forecast we're going to be pretty close to the numbers. Is that it? <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> you're a wizard. <laughs> okay, uh, just if if I may address one more issue, the Spalding tornado on page uh, 12. We've incurred roughly $138,000 worth of expenses, and we're collecting uh, $253,000. The difference is about 111. That 253000 is the direct expenses that were incurred for the tornado, in addition to the indirect expenses that FEMA provides. For, for example, when we run a generator at 8 hours or 16 hours at uh, you know, $200 the hour, that's what they'll reimburse. That includes the uh, accommodation for the fuel, depreciation, and other ancillary expenses. So there's an indirect rate that's given for the equipment hours. And that's the reason we're seeing a little bit extra coming in for the, the, the tornado. Okay. So it will be made whole or better? It's going to be made better, it looks the, like. The, the whole concept is to be made whole, not necessarily better. Right. It just so happens out that it looks like we're getting a better rate, but we've used a lot of the equipment. We've used a lot of yeah. fuel, et cetera, which they do not pay for directly. They pay for that indirectly with that indirect rate. Well, and it's good to know, when do you anticipate the funds will come in? I don't know. Probably in 90 days. I'm, 90 I'm days? guessing. I'm guessing. Right. At now, when will you turn all this over to the auditors? When will you turn all the, book, the records over to the auditors? Since we've basically closed out, we're closing out the fiscal mm -hmm. year. We're going to be scheduling the auditors here around mid-August. So between now and at the end of the month, we're preparing trial balance information. We're getting all the check registers ready and basically have all the lead sheets prepared and ready to go for the auditors to show up in mid-August. The agenda item today includes the engagement letters for the audit engagement. Right, I saw and, that. And uh, one thing we've done differently this year than we have in the past, we've actually bumped up by uh, 60 days the delivery of the audit report. So rather than delivering December 31, the target date is now November 1. Years ago when I first got elected, it was always September the 30th, but they never made it. <laughs> Our so goal that would be nice if you get it 60 days in, in advance of the December 31st. Last year, I believe we got it right just before, uh, right before Thanksgiving. So our goal is to bump that up another two weeks and have it delivered in our hands by November 1st. Okay, very good. So just, Madam Chairman, just to clarify on the, the tornado issue, I don't want our audience to get the misconception that we're actually making more than we spend on the tornado. That's not the issue at all. The indirect cost actually pays for all the administrative costs that go along with operating the equipment and and uh, everything that goes along with it. So I don't want anybody to misunderstand that we're getting more back than we spent. That's not the case. Those are good points. 
And again, the, uh, your synopsis of our, uh, the economy and everything is a great read as well. Thank you. Okay, any questions? If not, we will go on into citizen comments. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you. At this time, I will open the floor to comments from the audience. Comments should relate to a specific agenda item not listed on the agenda for a public hearing or to a concern within the jurisdiction of the city. Commission meetings serve the purpose of conducting city business and are not a forum for the unlimited expression of opinion. I reserve the right to limit comments to matters germane to city business and may refer speakers to the city manager or other staff for resolution. Having said that, is there anyone on my left who would like to come forward and address the commission? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. My name is Willie David Jester. My address is 452 Palace Street, Griffin, Georgia. What was the street? I'm sorry. 452 Four, Palace Street. How can we help you, sir? On July the 3rd, I had uh, got a phone call from from my, from my kid's mother stating that my son was out of, was all out of his mind and everything. And as soon as I get over there, I get, I get over there and they give me some, something, they said somebody had gave him some, some kind of pain medicine to take. And he was all out of his head and it scared me because I'd never seen him in that condition. And I called the par, I had them to call the paramedic to come and see after him. Well, when the city uh, paramedic get there, the police officer come. He breaks and try to run. He was already out of his head. He breaks and try to run. They takes it, put him in handcuff, uh, put the knees in the neck and put him in handcuff. And on the way back from after they had put, put the knees in the neck, on the way back, he called one of my name. And I'm trying to figure out why is it, it took so much force for him to beat him up like they did. After he called one of my name, he snatched them out the other police officer hand, picked them up, and body slammed them back to the ground while he was in handcuffs. And he left and went on. They took him out to the county. Then when we last called him, we talked to Major uh, Major Daniel. Major Daniel told us that he had two counts of obstruction on him. One was in his house, and one was in the car where he was banging his head. Well, now, when we go to get him out, he got eight or nine more charges that were added in there. And, and I'm trying to figure out if, if, if we still, if, if we turning back or we going forward, I thought that the city would have served and to protect you, not to beat you up like they beat them up. And I talked to uh, Daryl Dix, and he told me sometimes they have to use necessary force. I asked him, I said, so once they get him in handcuffs and start walking him back to the car, is it all right for him to snatch it? Because he called him one of them names, he wasn't even in his right state of mind. So you got, and I kept begging them over and over again, if you please take him to the hospital, let's see what's going on. They gave me the pills and I gave it to the paramedic and, and uh, uh, the sergeant that was in charge, the paramedic gave it to him, he gave it to another police officer and the police officer said, well I guess, it's, I guess it could be some pain medicine, could be this. I want to know what it was that made him act so crazy. And I, now we went to get him out now he got six or seven, maybe eight, nine more charges on him. And I asked them what were the charges. They told me that uh, Officer De uh, Officer Darrell called me and told me that they dropped one of the destruction charges in the house, and now they charged him with terroristic threat and all this kind of stuff. And I want to know, is we is it time to stop turning back? Or, you know, we pulling together. We supposed to pull together. If you come up and one of them got your kid in handcuffs, you would not like the way they slam them to the ground. Thank you, sir. Is there someone that you would like to talk to here that might can assist you? We've, I've already talked to Mr. Jester, and he's already talked to the police department. We have an internal affairs investigation uh, going on currently based on his complaint. And after that investigation is complete, I'll be glad to share it with you. Okay. Thank you. Well, it sounds like it's being taken care of, but we appreciate you coming tonight, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, it's a public hearing, and you're going to have an opportunity then, Terry. <clears throat> but you can talk if you want to. <laughs> well, well, 
it's, no, if no. You're, you're on the right side of the room, you're on no, the left side of the room with the right me. side if you want to speak. <laughs> We're going to have a public... No. Sarah, your parents will come up to the public... In a minute, and you'll speak. I was going to let you speak, Terry, because I knew what you were going to say. Uh, is there anyone else on my left who would like to come forward and make a statement, please? Or bring any matter to our attention? All right. <clears throat> please come forward and state your name and address for the record. My name is Vicki Jester. I'm the, um, I'm the mom of the, of the young man that, that was out of the mind. Um, my father, I mean, my children, they uh, Vicky, lived out I'm stuff. sorry. Could you please give us your address? I, I, maybe I missed oh, okay. it. Okay. Um, my address is 1723 Carrington Drive, Griffin. My, um, my son and father left out some, some information. Um, as, as they got my son to, to the car, I asked, I asked them, I asked two of the officers, are you taking him to the hospital? Where, where are you taking him to? They told me, yes, ma'am, we're taking him to the hospital. I get to the hospital, and they didn't even take him to the hospital. They took him straight to the county. Um, so then I, get, I go back to my son's house, and an officer was still there. And I asked him, I, well, I told him, I said, well, I went out to the hospital. They didn't take my son to the hospital. So can you tell me why they didn't take him to the hospital? Because if he's out of his mind and, and doing all this stuff, my thing, it wasn't so much a, um, what he had said or whatever. My thing was, let's find out what's going on. Let's find out what he's taking. Um, let's get his stomach pump. Let's let's see something. Then we'll we'll take the next step from there. Because if he broke the law, then I know he's supposed to be um, taken care. You know, punished right. or whatever. <clears throat> but my first thing is his health. Let's pump his stomach out and let's find out. Send send the pills to the lab or whatever it need to be done. Instead of just saying assuming what the I could assume because I I. I know a lot about some medicine, uh, different types of pill or whatever. I could have assumed, but I didn't want to assume. I wanted to know for sure what it were. So then they tell me, well, we have um, somebody out to the jail that can that can attack it or whatever. But still, they can't detect it just by looking at him and seeing the way he's acting and say, well, he took this and he took that. And, and, and I mean, that, that was my concern. So I'm, I'm curious why. Because you can't just really be charged with something or, or just say, well, okay, he took this and... And, right. And Ms. Jester, you, you heard the city manager tell you that there's an investigation going on, that there's an in-house vest investigation. I heard. Uh -huh. Okay. You will get the results of that. So uh, all I can do is please be patient a few more days while they conduct that investigation, and then they will get back to you with the results. Okay. And we appreciate you coming, and I understand your, your, pro your concern as a mother. But uh, they are investigating this, so there will be answers. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else on my left who would like to come forward and, and address the commission? If not, is there anyone on my right who would like to come forward and address the commission? Okay, well, Bill, now we'll go into the public hearing section of our uh, agenda. Public hearings are conducted to allow public, public comment on specific advertised issues such as rezoning, ordinances, policy development, operating budgets, and other legislative actions to be considered by the city commission. All right, our first item here is to receive comments regarding an amendment to the Code of the City of Griffin, Georgia, at Article 6, Community Redevelopment Tax Incentive Ordinance at Section 82-143, hereby increasing the participation rate from three to seven times present and future millage rates. Director of Planning and Development Services, Frederick Gardner, will address. 
Good evening, Mayor Commissioners. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, we're here today. Uh, we did a presentation to the board back uh, in May regarding um, a request to increase our participation in the tax incentive, what we call our blight tax ordinance, from three times the miller's rate to seven times the miller's rate. As part of your agenda, you should see the agenda summary that kind of lays out what a house that's currently valued at $36,000 would pay in city taxes, and when you factor in what they're currently paying in is they're currently participating in the program uh, three times the millage rate would produce somewhere around three hundred and seventy eight dollars and it's seven times the millage rate uh, eight hundred and eighty four dollars uh, as you know we we've got somewhere close to a hundred properties participating um, and at the end of the fiscal year we had right around eleven $1 hundred and something dollars that was part of this program um, to make this more of an incentive for folks to either rehab their structures, demolish those structures, um, <coughs> or simply deed them over to an entity that can either do both or redevelop the property. Uh, we're asking for us to go up on the military participation from three to seven. Uh, I will be giving a presentation on August 1st to the Spalding County Commissioners to look at them participating as part of this program. And obviously if someone allows the tax to bill up, there's a potential for our land bank to go to work with addressing some of these issues. Uh, so there is a method to the madness to some degree on how we deal with these, but um, we still want to utilize this tool in the toolbox, but we want to strengthen the tool in the toolbox. Uh, so rather than pulling out the screwdriver, we want to pull out the big wrench <coughs> to start getting tightened down on and making it a little bit more uh, onerous for these folks to, to do something with the property. Right. This is a public hearing. Do we have anyone that would like to come forward and address this issue? If not, we'll go on to item number two. Receive comments regarding a request for a variance from the City of Griffin Zoning Ordinance, Section 416, Accessory Structure Requirements under the Planned Commercial District for the property located at 112 Oak Street, effectively reducing the side yard setbacks from the minimum required 15 feet to 6 inches. Director of Planning and Zoning, uh, Frederick Gardner, will address. Yes, ma'am. This is variance request 11 VAR 06. Uh, application submitted by Dr. Terry Wynn. Uh, he is requesting a reduction in the side yard setback to allow for an accessory structure um, to provide cover for an antique vehicle. Uh, there's currently a space in which I think Dr. Wynn utilizes to park his car now, but he wanted to be a covered parking. Uh, as you know, staff hasn't seen any variants that have been granted in the district as it relates to this use, so staff recommended denial of the request. And I think Dr. Terry is here too. All right, this is a public report. hearing, and uh, you're, you're now able to come and uh, state your case here. Thank you. My office, 112 West Oak Street. Very good. I'm Terry Wynn. Very good. <laughs> okay, I'm a practicing optometrist there. <laughs> Still practicing. When, if you own West Oak and face in the front of my office, to the left is United Bank property. Between my building, I got in the United adjacent to it is a parking space where I park my car. And uh, I've been working on this car for 13 years and finally got it done. It's a 1951 MG Clipper Blue, and it is beautiful. <laughs> I last drove it 37 years ago. I want to protect it with a shed. I got blessings from the president of United Bank, Jim Oaktree. He says it's fine. By the name, by the way, the car's name, MG, is Maggie. And we want to protect Maggie, and that's my reason. And this is just a simple little covered parking to park on it, nothing more. Four post standing shed with a metal top. Very good, thank you. All right, being a public hearing, is there anyone else who would like to come forward and address this issue? If not, we will go on to our consent agenda. Our consent agenda is to consider approval of minutes of the regular scheduled meeting on June the 14th, 2011, and minutes of the workshop on June the 14th, 2011. Madam, I found both sets of minutes to be in good order. Unless somebody has a, a correction, I move we approve the consent agenda as presented. Do I have a second? We have a motion. Do I have a second? All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Okay, it is unanimous, Judy. Thank you. All right, we're now into our regular agenda. 
Item number four, consider an amendment to the code of the city of Griffin, Georgia at Article 6, Community Redevelopment Tax Incentive Ordinance at Section 82-143, hereby increasing the participation rate from three to seven times present and future millage rates. Madam Chair, I move that we approve the amendment as presented. Do, and do I have a second? second? All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Okay, all right, it is unanimous, thank you. Item number five, consider a request for a variance from the City of Griffin Zoning Ordinance Section 416 Accessory Structure Requirements under the Planned Commercial District for the property located at 112 Oak Street, effectively reducing the side yard setbacks from the minimum required 15 feet to 6 inches. Madam Chair, I move that we approve the variance. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the variance. All those in favor, please raise your right Thank hand. You yes. Is this, it's a, is this a temporary structure? Is this no. some? No. It's not. It's a permanent structure. Okay. You, it, you say it's going to be four posts just like a, a shed, but will it be concreted into the ground or? Well, yes. Yeah. I mean. It'll be concreted and uh, after you finish, uh, my office is a uh, sort of barnyard gray color, and just the posts and the timbers will be painted to match. Yeah, it can be kind of pretty good to run. Oh, it can be strong. You must be expecting for Maggie to be around a long time. <laughs> 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 well, I'm glad to see that you're going to take care of Maggie in the proper manner. I'm just glad we had a, uh, a request come to us that where the thing hadn't already been done. That's true. <laughs> that, that, that is <laughs> absolutely true. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Okay, it is unanimous. You have your, your shelter now. Okay, item number six, consider a one-year agreement with Leeds Online in the amount of $5,890 for the purpose of identifying merchandise and persons suspected of crimes. Uh, do we have any questions on this? The chief is here. I, I, do have, I do have a question. This says pawn shops, which I understand, also says metal, metal dealers. Yes, is this going to actually... Something that metal dealers. We already have it at the metal dealers. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 It's the same thing. Uh, okay. Doing. But the, I, I guess I know that. I, I didn't ask my question properly. But does it not have a description of all the, uh, what was pawned and all? Are the metal dealers giving you descriptions of what it is? Yes, yeah, so That's if, what I'm trying to if, ask. If you steal a old fashioned porcelain bathtub, they will put it in as 400 pounds of galvanized steel. Oh. So it's it's the weight of the metal, and it would be worth what? A lot of money. <laughs> so the so the pond it, it's not it a, has real effect with the pond dealers, but minimal effect with the metal dealers. Well, it, it at least gives me a trail to follow as far as who brought it, because they have to use photographic ID. Okay. And I can at least go back and make an arrest on something that I can identify. Right. Yeah. I make a motion to approve. All right. Second. We have a motion to approve in a second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Okay, it is unanimous. Thank you. Item number seven, consider a request to, de de to declare surplus 11 vehicles from the police department. Madam Chair, I move we approve this surplus uh, as presented. Uh, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the uh, surplus. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Okay, it is unanimous. Thank you. Item number eight, consider the purchase of uh, 3,600 450 series Neptune water meters for automatic meter reading from Delta Municipal Supply. We've been working on this a while. Do I have a motion? A motion to approve. Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Judy, thank you. All right, item number nine, award various chemical bids for water and wastewater treatment chemicals. Uh, Director of Public Works and Utilities, Dr. Keller, will answer any questions you might have. Madam Chair, I move that we approve this list of chemical purchases and the bid prices as, as presented. All right, are there any questions? Do we have a second? second? All right, we have a motion and a second to approve. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Thank you. <coughs> Item number 10, consider the purchase of a 2011 Ford E350 Econoline cargo van from Ad Allen Vigil Ford off-state contract in the amount of $22,144 for the Water Wastewater Division. Uh, 
Do we have any, um, do you want any questions answered on this? I know it's for the Water Leak Division. The present one is really grim. <laughs> I move we get him a new one. I have a question. Okay. Let's ask that for the purpose of the um, All right. Um, <coughs> did, um, did we get a bid from um, our local Fort Diller? On this. I'd have to ask Phil. We took it off state contract. Okay. No, so we, we did not. We just take it off state contract. It's already been bid out. Okay. So that means what? Means that Allen Vigil got their state you contract. You don't have to go through the you bid process if we buy directly from state contract. Uh huh. So state. is that, who, that is yes, Allen Vigil who we purchased when we yes. buy for? That who we, that is. This who? is one of the exceptions to the bid requirements. Okay. So well, basically, all the local for dealer bid. is not under state contract. They have, to, they have to state contract is when the state goes out and gets bids from all dealers and essentially the low bidder for the state is awarded the state contract. So, you know, whether or not Allen Vigil was included on on their bid process or not, I don't know. But I, I'm the local Speedway, huh? That's what I'm asking. It's, it's yeah, I mean, you know, just, just curious. It's kind of the same thing we'll, we'll do as well. Well, if it's on state contract, essentially it's been bid out by the state itself uh, over across the state mm -hmm. the lowest amount for government. Speedway would have had an option to put in a bid for the state contract mm -hmm. once it was bid. I don't, I don't know if they did or not. Oh, okay. All right, so we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. <coughs> okay, it is unanimous. Thank you. Item number 11, consider approval of streets for Georgia Tr Department of Transportation uh, local maintenance and improvement grant, which is called a LEMIG grant. Uh, and have you all had an opportunity to look at the streets that uh, Brant sent us as suggestions? Mm -hmm. um, Will we be doing these this year? Um, I, last year, LMIG didn't get funded. Right. So we're hoping that this year it will. They're going through the list of projects now. So I would venture to say it, it used to be called LARP, and you all know how right. that works. you got to get streets ready by November, and we see them the following summer or sometimes on that. So I would think that we would um, see it sometime in the spring when the weather breaks. Okay. Um, th these streets, are is this an, in addition to the ones that we already gave? Or what? Uh, no, no. ma'am. This is a list just for what the state's going under LMIG, um, which used to be LARP. Okay, we are submitting a list of streets to them, saying that these are the streets we're going to uh, do. There's a ratio. I have this real fancy formula that tells us we have basically about four hundred and seventy-seven thousand dollars that would be appropriated to our city through that formula. And these are the bigger streets that are uh, with higher traffic volumes that we wanted to see uh, paved, and we also wanted to um, get your input if you wanted another additional street added. We roughly, 477,000 gives you about five miles of paving. It costs about 80000 to $85,000 to pave a, a lane mile. I didn't put North Hill Street on there because we have the LCI coming up and uh -huh. it's going to be totally reconfigured and it would make, kind of make us look stupid to, uh, to have it resurfaced and then uh, two years from now tear the whole thing up. Okay. I thought about you, Ms. Ward, when, when I when I put yes, this list. I should have put that comment on there. It's, that's under the LCI, and it'll be totally okay. reconfigured. Yes, sir. Right. We made out our uh, list and some of the streets that would be additional streets. Uh, additional streets um, for uh, uh, Splash the Pave or for um, Elmig. We'll be able to take a look at that list. And uh, yes, so you're going to hopefully look at the collections are doing rather well. Uh, I'm working with Adam on a couple things right now, and hopefully we should be able to do some more paving next year, and you can, will be able to submit a list to us uh, for that. Well, if Elmig hasn't changed from LARP, basically, in that they can pick any of those they jolly well please, any part of them, they do what they want. Well, the rules have changed, uh, rules of engagement, I guess you'd say, because it's always a battle. But uh, supposedly, we submit the streets, they say, yeah, they come out and check at them this time, and we have an appropriation according to the formula. And they, the state funded $95 million for all the jurisdictions. 
our portion of that due to lane miles is um, roughly 477,000. But I can't guarantee you that they're not going to say, well, these are the ones you're going to pay. I think motion to approve. You are ready to make the motion? No. no. Do okay. you do? Uh -huh. I'll second. All right, we have a motion to approve and a second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Okay, very thank good. You. And Drew, unanimous. we'll get with Drew and certify the right away, and we'll be good to go. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Item number 13, consider approval of engagement 12. letters. 12. Number 12. Okay, you're right. I put a check mark prematurely by. Consider approval by resolutions and budget amendments for fiscal year 2010-2011 and fiscal year 2011-12 for the rollover of $660,465. Funds are for fiscal year 2011 projects that will be complete in fiscal year 2012. Do we have any questions on it? I was curious, what the downtown beautification project, what was, what was that one? We're transferring some money over for Adam for the De Development Authority, and I think Bill, Bill, um, Bill, Bill took off on me. <laughs> it's for, for lighting for downtown, for street lighting, and uh, part of the parks as well. So we're just going to roll over some monies to be able to accommodate that. Yeah. Part of the, uh, did you say park? The park, right? Was that for the park? For well, it's, it's in general, it's $50,000 that the electric department budgets in their budget for downtown electrical issues that would help us beautify downtown, whether it's street lights or whether it's removing some poles where we've got some of the old poles and, you know, some of the alleys are in pretty bad shape when it comes to the wiring. So it's just a lump sum that we put in downtown beautification. And we, we didn't do anything this year because Adam was trying to coordinate his downtown project with his project over there. So we kind of wanted to hold that over until he got his project complete to see if we needed to use it in that area rather than some of the other areas. Okay. Okay. All right. We have a motion and a second. Do we? Okay. Don't we? Who? who? No. I, I, we didn't. I, I move we approve if we haven't. Okay. Uh, all right. We have a motion and a second. Now, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. Okay. It is unanimous. Thank you. All right, number 13, consider <coughs> approval of engagement letters for audit services with Malden and Jenkins certified public accountants. I'm sure I move we approve. A second. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a question. I lived through it. <laughs> yes. Do, do we have, ever have anybody else? Uh, that's all I ever see is Malden and Jenkins. Do we ever have anybody else on the list? We oh, have okay. the auditors. Yes, excuse me. <laughs> you may have to take over. I don't know. Wow, I got a whiff of something that is really making me think. you were about to say something. I, I can address that, that question. Would you please? Yes, ma'am. There is a five-year rotation period that's that's been sort of uh, established as a, a best practice to rotate the auditors out every five-year period. We have chosen to keep Moulton and Jenkins on for a couple of reasons. Number one, we were switching over the financials two years ago. They were going to go through and audit the old uh, system and then had to audit the new system. It didn't make sense to change out in the middle and then have the a new set of auditors come in and re-audit the old system and the new system so, say, so they can gain confidence levels in the numbers. So we chose to hold off. We chose to hold off a second year because we then converted customer service. And that is also a huge part of our financial system. Now it's time for us to address this issue and put an RFP together in the future, whether it's next year or the year after, but in the next two years, I think we really owe it to ourselves to begin that rotation process, or at least consider it. Does that answer? Um, yeah. Okay, very good. All righty, do we have a motion to approve? A motion to approve. All right, do we have a second? Second. All right, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Okay, it's unanimous, thank, thank you. you. All right, consider approval of a resolution authorizing the condemnation of 3,931 acres of property for the maintenance and improvement of a stormwater detention pond owned by Glenn E. Daniels. How about 3.931? Let's go, go. What did I say? <laughs> oh, it's 3.931. Thank you, acres. Oh, yeah, you're right. Thank this is you. the resolution <laughs> by which you would authorize us to commence the filing of condemnation proceedings 
against the property. This is the Ashton Place detention pond right. that we've had so much trouble with here of late, and it's not being maintained. The city's going to have to take over the maintenance. But to do it, we've got to be able to own it and control it. Question. Who are we, when we condemn it, who are we purchasing it, purchasing it from? Well, Mr. Daniel is record owner of the property at this time, but this is the parcel. If you look in the resolution, you'll see it's pretty well covered up with liens. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go back That's several years. So we we're going to pay the money into court, and then anybody who has a claim to the money will deal with the court and try to get the money out. Okay. But, but we'll pay it into court, and in turn, we'll get an order conveying title to the It's interesting the that there's $2,670 in back taxes, so the taxes come off the top. Right. And most left I, I imagine most of it's going to be winding up being paid to the Spalding County Tax Commissioner. Right. And this has been such a boondoggle for so many years. So, and, and we've maintained it because there was no one else to do it. So I, I think this is a great chance. What's the time frame we're talking about before we can actually begin? We will be filing the condemnation petition before the end of this month, within most likely within the next week. And we should have an order conveying title to us before the end of the month. Okay. It's so just a matter of we're public work. And right. Can right. We, we can get said, you know, there'll be legal proceedings which can drag on theoretically for a couple of years. but. But we don't anticipate title will go ahead and pass it to the city. city we'll do our project. Is the maintaining it right now, though, right? Yeah. Are we doing, well, we doing only what the city's been doing? Yeah, I mean, we go over there and cut okay. it a couple well, times a year. Well, we usually don't, don't until I get the complaints, yeah. and then we'll, we go when I get the complaints. Let me ask you a question. Have anybody uh, contacted Mr. Daniel? Oh, yes. He's been, we've talked with him several times, but he can't do anything with it because of the lien situation. Yeah. He I'm thought sure. he was getting a good piece Madam of real Chair, estate. I move we we'll approve. Second. All right, we have a motion to approve and a second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Okay, it is unanimous. Thank you. Before you get to your next item, this is the 2009 CDBG project. Commissioners Evans, Ward, and Holberg were all uh, disqualified on this project, so you will have to recuse yourselves from can participation. Can we just sit here or do we need to leave? I think you can just sit here and just okay. not participate. One, two, three. Okay, we have four people that will be it able to vote on it leaves this. just enough to to approve right. the resolution. Okay, consider approval. Who, who all? Who all was, uh, uh, Cynthia and Will. And Doug. Doug. And, and Doug. Doug. And Doug is off on a mission trip. Okay. Yeah. All right. Consider approval of a resolution uh, authorizing the condemnation of property for acquiring permanent easements for Thomaston Mill sewer rehabilitation 2009 CDBG project. Madam Chair, I move we approve. All right. We have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Okay, it is unanimous, Judy, and it passes. Thank you. They I finish out everything. They're all the parcels over there. I believe. Well, I believe it does. I think we everything else wound up on, on 2009. Well, I think we've actually got all 2010. Steve Manley got the agreement signed last week. Okay, very good. Plan. All right. Item number 16, consider approval of a request from the University of Georgia Griffin Campus for $17,500 for support of continuing education program. Best money we spend each year. I move we approve. I second. All right. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Okay, it is unanimous. Thank you. City Manager, do you have a report? <laughs> Just remind you that uh, Thursday morning we'll be on Fox 5. Is Fox 5 will be here for their Good Day Atlanta morning show highlighting the historical city of Griffin. So be sure to get up early and watch Fox 5. Right. I think it starts at 8 o'clock uh, Thursday morning at, uh, at 8 o'clock. Where are they going to be? Uh, they're going to be around town, the Hill, Solomon Street. They're going to be, I think, at uh, Safe House Coffee early. They're going to the Welcome Center and uh, have some people talk to them there. And, uh, I think they're going to be highlighting the Tiger Lily. And uh, the uh, sock shop. The sock shop. Uh, <laughs> slices pizza. Right, and the slices pizza. And okay. a couple, okay. couple okay. of I'll explain. They have a reporter and a camera coming to Griffin. And I don't know if you watch uh, the, the early morning show on Channel 5. 
and they have uh, today they highlighted Decatur and so tomorrow they're gonna I mean Thursday morning they are coming into Griffin to highlight uh, downtown and they will be and it's a beautiful blind y'all ought to all come just so that you can see this beautiful blind that's doing the interviews and uh, I don't know what our cameraman looks like but anyway maybe he'll be a hunk that'll be nice <laughs> And on that note, speaking of hunks, I'd like to congratulate the city attorney uh, for, <laughs> for being recognized uh, into the Georgia Municipal Association Hall of Fame and uh, would like to recommend to the commissioners that sneezing. maybe we recognize him at a future meeting for that honor. Oh. Well, I appreciate I, that. I, yes. I, I would like to say I, I would like to thank all of you who had something to do with that. I've, the last two weeks, I've kind of learned that maybe Mr. Smith was one of the lead culprits that uh, uh, neglected to tell me they were going to do that at GMA this year. Uh, I thought I was down there mainly to swear in the incoming presidents and the officers, and uh, they pulled the slick one on me. But, that's right. Uh, it's, it's not often you can out slick a lawyer. I, that's true. <laughs> But I think you were at fault, too. <laughs> I do appreciate it. Well, I have to tell you, Drew was really surprised, and he was moved to tears, almost to tears. It made me proud of him. Okay. Uh, Ryan, any comments? I don't. Okay, Will, any comments? Like I said once before, congratulations on your uh, uh, recognition, Drew. Thank you, Will. Understand. Ms. Ward. No comment. Okay. Uh, is she here? Well, I would also like to congratulate you. Uh, congratulate you. And I'm still looking for that hump, though. <laughs> 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 also, I would like to uh, uh, say we had a wonderful time in Savannah, and it was very, uh, I, I learned a lot uh, there. Uh, and I also want to say about the commissioners here, uh, I know when, uh, <clears throat> when, uh, uh Commissioner Mar was running for uh, was campaigning in '09. He made the statement something that caught my attention about teams. He used the word teams, and uh, and I want to say uh, thank these, these commissioners uh, for um, trusting each other, respecting each other, and uh, working together with each other uh, as a team. Congratulations and thanks. Okay, thank you, Shahir. Mr. Mara? I do congratulate Drew. I think it's Chuck, not Hump, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> but that's all I got. <laughs> you didn't expect didn't that either, did you, me. Drew? <laughs> <laughs> you, you may have to talk to, uh, Mr. to uh, Mr. Smith afterwards. Uh, we're all very proud of anything that comes our way because we know how hard the citizens and our, our employees work toward making Griffin a better place. Uh, with that in mind, other than uh, congratulating Drew again, which I'd already done down in Savannah. Uh, at our next meeting uh, in the morning after our workshop, I'd like to have a, not a long, but I'd like to have kind of a staff retreat, a mini staff retreat, so that we can uh, come to terms on some things that have come forward and kind of uh, solidify this fact that we are a team. So uh, keep that in mind that we'll be having a mini retreat on uh, that morning of our, which will be uh, July the 24th. If this is, that's May, no, that's not right. July the 26th, July the 26th. Uh, having said that, uh, do I have a motion for us to adjourn? Okay, second. All in favor say aye. Okay.